All right, everyone, it's time to talk about the five U.S. moral panics, uh, their uh, length and their overlap really with communications technology, which is one of the reasons why when I analyze what's going on right now, the current social panic of our era, which is related, to, in part it's related to Russian influence into the political system, in part it's a, a reference to fringe political ideologies, which often get conflated with the same. Uh, you can see it's beginning, the first wave of that social panic currently is dying. Uh, they're giving up the Russia line in favor of the secret army of Nazis and or secret army of communists line, uh, which means it has transformed from an exterior social panic like Red Scare mode. Uh, the first wave, of course, was worry about Russia. The second wave of it, uh, which is now emerging in the current moral panic, became interior. It was internalized. Instead of worrying about Russia, uh, specifically as a state and its own espionage, it was, became a worry about interior elements that had become influenced by the same and had proceeded to begin sabotaging the U.S. political system. In the third wave, it extends even further. Uh, however, we have reason to be uh, happy right now because we've got the Internet. Um, and with each successive faster and better stage of less centralized technology, uh, it seems that these panics last for a shorter period. So the first stage, the first moral panic that we ever had in this country, really, was actually the slavery debate, and it lasted some 50 years at the dawn of the 1800s. There was already a, a debate going on over the place of slavery in this country. Uh, at first, again, uh, it was primarily externalized in the form of the northerners uh, saying, oh, well, you know, the Southerners, they have these slaves, and it's, it's affecting the voting system, and so on and so on forth. It becomes a moral argument, uh, a moral argument against slavery for some uh, abolitionists. For others, it actually became almost a white nationalist uh, debate, even for people in the North. People like Abe Lincoln uh, were not in favor of granting citizenship for, uh, for people who had been slaves. They were in favor of, of uh, actually uh, creating a colonial situation in what is now Liberia and exporting the problem. Their idea was, hey, we're going to free these people. We're going to send them back to where they thought, well, you know, they're, they're not part of our culture. We're going to send them back over uh, and they can form a country there. And, and, of course, it had the trappings of the basic sort of Western model at the time, still does. Uh, and that was really their solution to it. This comes to a head with the Civil War, but there was a communication technology overlap. When the debate began, uh, there was no telegraph. The telegraph speeding up communication actually helped to end the moral panic. Well, it ends, it ends with the end of the Civil War. Uh, it then, of course, it goes off into Jim Crow and segregation land, but the slavery debate itself was then over. Um, and communications did help. The North had a huge advantage uh, in a direct sense <laughs> because it had more of that infrastructure. It also overlaps. In, in essence, it overlaps with the uh, availability of railroads, specifically for moving troops and goods around uh, from battlefield to battlefield much more quickly and in larger numbers. The South uh, at the time had to rely more heavily on, on cavalry, on horses. <laughs> horses and wagons or walking around as opposed to the North, which could very quickly transfer men from one spot to another because there was more industry. Uh, that also overlaps directly with the telegraph. Of course, uh, it was between urban centers, uh, settled areas. You didn't need a telegraph out to some farm in the middle of nowhere unless it had some strategic purpose. So that ends uh, with the Civil War. The next moral panic, after some decades pass, begins with the early wave of the temperance debate. Now, temperance and prohibition are the same thing. They're twain. The prohibition era is simply the success of the moral panic at the era uh, of instituting itself in a legal sense. Temperance predates it. You can find temperance postcards. If you look on eBay, look up temperance postcards. You'll find them from the, the 1800s, far, far before the actual era of legalized prohibition in the country. It was already a debate that was waging. Again, as before, it overlaps with communication technology. The sort of telegraph and postcard driven <clears throat> uh, 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 communication of the era with simple mail and simple electronic communication. 
uh, eventually as it becomes more centralized and thus authoritarian naturally lends itself more to the authoritarian uh, pro moral panic side of the argument it's always authoritarianism that's driving it of one form or another uh, to have a moral panic you need moralism and it needs to have an enemy to fight again uh, it shifts over time from simply temperance in the sense of well you know we, we want people to be religious and we want people to drink less and we want pe we want a respectable culture to we need to institute actual prohibition the rise of early radio really kills this off because novel technologies here's the fundamental principle emerge out of the old authoritarian centralized technologies and the new wave of skilled individuals using them tend because they are outsiders by default to be less given over to centralization less given over to censorship and authoritarianism and we're gonna see this throughout the other three moral panics we'll discuss as well the same era that overlaps with the rise of radio being widely available uh, kills off the temperance movement prohibition uh, goes the way of the dinosaur specifically because people realize it's not working now they had no real way to realize that prior because the communications technologies were were primarily being used by people who would have been dry or pretended to be of course at the time then we have the red scare and after some decades post prohibition uh, there is no red scare we get a, a period of stability and then the next moral panic arises it begins under radio uh, in the absence generally speaking of television the very earliest sort of experimental video is being used in this era uh, it wouldn't be another 10 years before uh, black and white television became commonplace in uh, American households in fact a little bit more than 10 years for areas that were less urban again uh, the authoritarian leanings of radio already uh, being present at the time its control by people who are part of the establishment um, it falls by the wayside the Red Scare begins with people looking at the Soviet Union and and its offshoots and saying we've got a problem here they're going to try to destroy us it's external it's a fight against a legitimate enemy also in all of these cases with legitimate solutions being offered it then is transformed over time throughout the period of the Red Scare collapsing around the time of the Vietnam War actually uh, when public opinion turns heavily uh, against it and this overlaps with the civil rights moral panic as well although that's less of a moral panic and more of a social movement in and of itself uh, perhaps some of the the uh, signs uh, some of the people proclaiming that a racial war was coming that would be part of a moral panic it really though ties in with the Red Scare because it was thought that it was being perturbed by communist agents what originally starts out for the first few years as well reds under the bed literally uh, espionage agents and influenced by the USSR becomes after a time something totally different it's no longer a worry about a foreign state it's a worry about people domestically that have already been influenced by that foreign state this ends uh, with the availability uh, of more modern television we're talking the sort of the color TV era and it, it persists there were still worries about the USSR as a political entity as an actual nation uh, but it's not exactly the same and so semi-modern TV comes along throughout this period uh, and destroys that moral panic as people begin absorbing sort of the entertainment and so forth towards the 70s the Red Scare begins to die down and people uh, begin solely fixating on the USSR again which they should have done all along there was never any legitimate reason to be worried that your neighbors were espionage agents but there were people uh, taken in by propaganda at the time who thought that was illegitimate then some time goes by uh, in relative stability again and then you have the next social panic uh, you have the the satanic panic specifically it's more than that it, it tied in with bad race relations even at that time too uh, race relations are often dragged in uh, on the side into these various panics the temperance movement was prefaced on Asian influence and opium uh, the slavery debate of course was explicitly part of the uh, bad relation uh, race relations of the day the Red Scare involved uh, worries about espionage agents of certain ethnicities uh, the satanic panic was right there in, in the same mode actually uh, though it was uh, flipped on its head in the satanic panic uh, the supposedly satanic side was linked with white nationalism uh, most of this was nonsense 
it didn't help that at the time white nationalists of the air the metzgers of the world uh, were involved with sort of the the uh, shock TV era the pre MTV era of some of these shocking TV shows they were the ones that would host you know some Satanist or Wiccan to talk about their views um, and and so it there was an overlap there but it didn't mean they were ideologically connected this ends basically with the uh, MTV sort of reality television Beavis and Butthead Howard Stern stuff uh, that happened the on-demand era really kills it I would say the collapse of the USSR severely decreasing moral panic overall uh, social alienation in the country also helped it destroyed it at the time the reason why the current social panic is more evident um, is partially the result of the internet and it's partially the result of the fact that in the post 9-11 era that that brief period of social stability and tranquility between the fall of the USSR and 9-11 has has gone away uh, we no longer have that anymore and uh, even though the original fundamental problem which is you know al-qaeda uh it has sort of fallen out of the public debate and now it's you know it's isis or it's de destabilization or even korea which has nothing to do with it uh it's still very much in people's minds thinking at any time some plane's going to come down and crash into a skyscraper so the last generation of moral panic decays with the very early rise of the internet we're talking like the irc chat room era along with the on-demand and sort of shock jock content, the MTVs of the world. The current moral panic that we're in is being driven by that same now centralized, uh, regulated, monopolistic, early wave internet in cahoots with social media. Uh, that's what it's being driven by. You could almost insert a, f a sixth moral panic between the one we're in and the satanic panic, which would be, again, early wave social media destroys it, but it was originally an early internet it was the post 9-11 moral panic I'm not sure we can make that argument explicitly I don't see that as the same as these other social panics the current one that we're in involves fringe uh, political ideologies overlapped with Russian espionage it's almost a return to the Red Scare era uh, in that sense only minus actual communism uh, in the Russian sense so much as the fanatic fringe Antifa related political movement sense it's being driven in part by discourse that is linked to the current incarnation of the internet what I believe will kill it off uh, at least in part is another wave of communications technology my speculation is that this will be a decentralized variant of the internet incapable of being censored which will inevitably be more libertarian in form as always with past uh, progress in communications uh, you see that people who are holdovers from the MTV generation they were very edgy at the time now they're not uh, people who were on radio when it first rose up uh, lost favor or, or stopped being edgy they fell into the mainstream TV did the same thing what was at first very novel uh, and very exciting and less centralized became highly centralized under a very small number of companies the same thing will happen to the old guard tech firms just like standalone sites increasingly they fall under the banner of a handful of hosting providers uh, which have now inserted themselves into the current arguments that we're having uh, in society they will begin to fall by the wayside as as other groups build entirely new web-based infrastructure it will be faster it will be cheaper and more efficient it'll be less centralized at least for some time and it'll be a good thing ultimately for the country and it will lend itself into the end of the moral panic now moral panic I don't know that it requires new communications technologies to go away I don't know that that specifically is the case but it's certainly helpful and each of these panics has lasted a, a smaller amount of time the slavery debate waged for half a century the temperance debate for 35 40 years the Red Scare lasted about 30 years before it had completely collapsed we're talking the very end of the 40s through again like late 70s early 80s it, generally speaking by then a lot of it had died down the, the the nuclear question was different the nuclear question got worse in the 80s uh, under Ronald Reagan and and the USSR's leadership at the time the USSR went totally haywire started building thousands and thousands of new missiles they had their their peak missile superiority was in the middle of the 1980s but that was different the the political debate had shifted away from we're inevitably going to come to blows 
to we've got a generally a hold of this situation we learned our lesson from the cuban missile crisis basically the next uh debate the satanic panic lasted about 15 years actually a little bit less it essentially emerges with the gothic movement uh, and the rise of of the the sort of uh, 80s style of heavy metal early 80s we're talking about very end of the 70s you can make an argument for it emerging out of san francisco actually at the time you got to remember as soon as that shocking tv began to rise up uh, to give a platform to people who had fringe ideologies because people because it was exciting people wanted to be titillated by violence or or something that was out there something that was shocking and offensive to them they love being offended don't don't let the uh, modern day social justice warriors kid you they love the fact that they can be offended all day they just get offended very very easily they're, they're constantly looking for gratification uh, it lasts 10 15 years the current panic I see it has lasted for five years which means that we're mostly done with it if if the trend holds true within american history with each panic being shorter than the last and with communications technology almost undergoing already a, a new paradigm shift in and of itself towards decentralization towards a new wave of social media uh, that will be differentiated from the first that rises up around the mid 2000s with the, the the emergence of YouTube and some of these sites uh, MySpace Facebook and so forth and continues with Twitter what I think will happen is that it will collapse fairly quickly within two or three years I don't think it'll even last 10 years this time around it would be uh, almost unthinkable that it would last as long as the last moral panic did if it does it will have bucked a, a, a long-term trend in the United States and if you insert the post 9-11 social panic in there you could say that that lasted about you know eight or nine years essentially uh, through the through the middle of the Obama era when things scale down to some degree in the Middle East and the public loses interest that's basically when it stops However, if that's the case, if we include the, our, our prediction of what happens with the current moral panic relies upon whether we consider that a sixth moral panic. If we consider the post 9-11 terrorists are going to get us stuff as a true social panic, uh, and it does show some hallmarks of that, if we consider that an aberrant social panic, we might expect that the current one will last longer. Um, because that one managed to last almost as long as the satanic panic. Maybe we've bottomed out and, and the, they can't last a shorter amount of time anymore. They're actually compacted closer together and we're going to have very short periods of stability between them. That would be a bad outcome, by the way. <laughs> that would be a bad thing. It would mean driving communications technology much more quickly, but socially speaking, it would lead to great instability. If we ignore that and we don't consider that a true social panic because the entire population at first is totally united uh, under the response given and then later totally united in, in rebuking what we had been doing and we look at that more as part of the prior social panic almost a, lat, a late stage sort of decline of it like the hippie movement maybe which was almost its own separate moral panic at the time like a secondary moral panic and these happen too. If we consider it secondary, uh, then good days are ahead because within two or three years, this current moral panic will be done. We'll enter into a decade where shocking and offensive stuff is, is exciting and funny again. Comedy will get better. Music will probably get better. Being edgy will be everywhere. Uh, people will get less offended. They'll become desensitized. Censorship will go the way of the dinosaur for a while. Uh, centralization online will be defeated. Uh, and it would be very optimistic. Now, that's what I see as the more likely scenario. That's why I'm long-term optimistic about our our existence as a country. If I'm wrong, uh, if we consider the post-9-11 era to be its own separate moral panic, uh, I would have to be somewhat more pessimistic. Uh, but then, uh, because that would have bucked the long-term trend as well, maybe we buck other trends. So uh, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe we manage to suppress moral panic for a longer period. We wouldn't have a way of knowing because it would be unprecedented in all of U.S. history. So yeah, there's a little bit about moral panics, kind of dense. Uh, some of you are going to be like, what? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? But it's true. Uh, that's the way that things have worked in this country. It's just the natural cycle of mankind. It, it fits in with Strauss Howe and the cycling generations. Each generation or few generations lends itself to new ideas. They panic the old establishment. They, they get them riled up.
and then things uh, eventually shift in a new direction. Uh, and that's sort of the way that things work. It's, uh, it happens all over the world, too. It's not just here. But other countries aren't concerned uh, in our own, more, they're, they're insular for the most part. The, the worries about globalism aside, that's just part of the, the current or maybe last social panic or secondary social panic in the 9-11 sense. Uh, but we can't say that for sure. We have to wait and see, I guess, what happens. We're almost going to have to apply retrospectively to that era to see whether it was a true moral panic or just a secondary effect from the prior wave of panic that happened to occur, sort of collapse of Soviet Union and, and, and the MTV stuff shocking and offending people. Is that of itself, did that spawn its own separate moral panic or was it simply the drawing down and, and destruction of the prior era uh, with its own communication technology? So I remain generally optimistic. I think that the way things are going right now will be looked back on and laughed at much as the Red Scare tends to be laughed at. The Satanic Panic is laughed at. There are still people today uh, that believe that the sort of propaganda and authoritarian stuff from the 80s was true. Oh, there, there was a conspiracy of devil worshippers and stuff. They, look, they talk about the Presidio a lot with Aquino or some of these figures. Uh, having spoken with people who were intricately involved in the Satanic Panic, I can tell you my own feeling is that it was a bunch of bunk for the most part. That people that were uh, at the time abusive would be like the Ted Haggarts of the, the more current era that is aberrant individuals uh, whose own uh, lurid uh, lifestyles did lend itself to the moral panic at the time and were used as evidence that it was much more wide-reaching. It's a little bit like the Salem witch trials. One person gets bewitched pretty soon and dozens of people are hanging on Gallows Hill. And that's just sort of the way that it goes, but we have to resist it. In any given moral panic, you do have to have resistance. If you don't have resistance, then the moral panic lasts forever and keeps going wild until it collapses everything. Um, so there do, there do need to be intelligent, rational, well-spoken, thought-out individuals uh, who lend themselves against whatever the panic happens to be at the time. They have to then attempt to defeat it, otherwise it, it never goes away. It doesn't matter what communications technology you develop, strictly speaking. Um, it might get uh, sidelined, but it would still be there, essentially. That's about all. Peace out.